Hi, welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. I tried to do an interesting intro out in the cold, but it was way too cold. So let's actually uh, continue the normal way. Today's topic is uh, Java IDEs and productivity. So in 2020, uh, the company where I'm working did very interesting uh, little survey and uh, there's a lot of good information. I'll drop the link in the description section as always. But probably the one I'm using today is this one. What ID are developers using? And mind you, everybody is not developing Java. So this is a bit kind of wider uh, choice of IDEs. So there is also, uh, also C-sharp development going on, development with Go, Node.js, etc. So not just Java, but uh, anyways, 61% uh, had IntelliJ installed and, and preferred to use it. Uh, then we had 51% was using Visual Studio Code. As you can see, these are not like exclusive percentages. So, so a lot of people have multiple tools on their machine. Some people prefer to, by the way, write their own editors. <laughs> That's also a possibility. I did that long back, but it was not very good. It was not extremely productive. So how would you able to put these to order? I have some ideas on that one. So uh, price is definitely one thing. Do you want a free editor or do you, are you willing to pay for it? Because uh, if you are using the ID for your work, then a few hundred euros, dollars, uh, doesn't really matter because it's like few hours of billing less than a day in most cases so if it makes you more productive probably you should just whip out the cash uh, either the company pays or you pay it but uh, it's probably highly worth it so i don't think money is typically an ob object here but uh, it might be if you're starting out uh, if you're starting to learn things you might be definitely looking for the free options first so you will immediately discard anything where you need to put some money I will show you some good options on both sides. Then second is language support. So I'm a polyglot programmer. I, uh, I spin multiple languages depending on what I'm working on. So there might be Java, TypeScript, uh, Python quite easily, something more exotic in some cases. So I'm looking mostly for IDs where I can get that support for more than just Java. And again, this is a question for you. So if you are a more traditional backend developer, and you only work with Java, then you might be inclined to find the best experience for that particular setup, right? Okay, so uh, then we have speed faction. Uh, there is pretty, pretty much two ways to get that productivity out of your IDE. So one is to have awesome guidance and tooling and support so that IDE pretty much uh, thinks for you and creates the code for you. So you are just showing direction, IDE follows it and uh, generates everything. And you might have fancy graphical editors where you can just pull on some primitives on the screen and create your code that way. The other extreme would be a tool that doesn't get on your way. So it can it, it opens up lightning fast. Um, it's like a text editor uh, approach, more or less. And uh, then you are able to very rapidly get some feedback going. And it's not going to do much for you, but it's not getting on your way. So this is for people with fast fingers, pretty much. I think I'm a little bit of the former school myself, so I, I like the idea that I show the direction and ID will do the boring stuff. Um, I'm not an um, extremely fast typist. Uh, it's not something I have, uh, I have tried. But anyway, that's up for your preferences. So price languages support speed, tooling. Uh, tooling means that uh, you would have good tools, let's say, for version control. Uh, do you like to do it in console? Uh, or command line, or do you prefer to do it within the ID by pressing buttons? Uh, do you like debuggers? Do you like graphical tools to draw your user interface so that you can fine tune it afterwards and generate the code? Do you need UML or modeling tools? So all of this tooling is what uh, differentiates quite a lot the IDs. So now that we have some baseline how to choose the best ID for you, let's dive and show you some popular options. I have some deep dives on my channel on some of these already. So if you are curious, I will drop some links in, in this video so you can find my, my um, uh, VS Code deep dives and IntelliJ deep dives, how to set things up for Java. Here is first one quite obvious. It was the biggest one in the survey. So IntelliJ, 
IntelliJ actually has a lot of developer tools coming. So if I open this menu, you can see that there is uh, a lot more than just IntelliJ IDEA. But IDEA is still the biggest one and you can get a lot of the other functionality in IDEA. And uh, this video is about Java tooling. So I would then get, then get started with just the basic IDEA. But as you can see, there is a lot more. For IDEA, uh, next choice is the edition. And uh, this will have effect on many things. So community edition is something you can just get from here, download for free. Um, but if you take a look at the features, they are highly lacking if we go a bit deeper. You can see that there is a lot of check marks that do not exist. And to kind of summarize on high level, what you would mostly be missing if you choose the free edition, uh, you would be uh, missing the framework support and web development big way. So if you're happy with just backend Java, basic Java stuff, uh, even Docker is included and debugger, uh, and of course, version control. So you get all that, you can just download it, start playing with it. Uh, if you're looking for a good ID, I would recommend uh, uh, you, you first get this one. You play with it and figure out if the look and feel is something that resonates with you. So if this is a good one, then you can opt to kind of update. So um, there is some uh, kind of uh, price tags when you, when you want to get the ultimate edition. And as the name implies, it has pretty much everything, all the best things they have. And then there is a plugin model where you can extend it a little bit more if you like. Uh, for individuals, they have a little bit cheaper prices. So I don't think this is a huge amount. Uh, many people just need to get that free fix. So then you would go for the community edition. Or we have VS Code. So VS Code is something you can just get and it's an awesome editor. I, ha I have been amazed how great work Microsoft has done with this one. So uh, it feels lightweight and fast. It has a huge uh, extension ecosystem and you can just download it for many platforms and start cracking at it. And it works marvelously. Uh, with the Windows subsystem for Linux. So I have that set up myself in this machine and I use it all the time. It's a great polyglot system as well. You can get awesome plugins for Python and, and Java. Um, what would be the pitfalls of this one? For me, uh, the extension ecosystem is a little bit same experience as with Eclipse, which is also an awesome free editor platform. But the problem is that it gets, it tends to get a little bit unstable when you add, keep on adding the plugins. So it works the best if you uh, add, uh, add like minimal plugins and unify them a little bit across the team. With the uh, commercial IntelliJ Ultimate, um, everybody in the team would be having pretty much the same plugins. So uh, their environments would be quite the same, which helps kind of standardize, unify things a little bit. With VS Code and Eclipse, it's a little bit more like a Wild West experience. So you have plugins for everything, but once like 10 people install plugins for everything, there might be some variation. And then uh, <clears throat> that's where the trouble and bugs live. Now you can um, understand this and you can, you can just set up some, some kind of um, instructions how people should set up their environments to standardize them a bit more. You can find happiness. You can stick to the well-known biggest plugins and, and stay away from the kind of uh, extreme and, and weird and small plugins. So you can cope with this, but just worth mentioning that you get a bit worse experience if you install a lot of uh, uh, exotic plugins here and in Eclipse. So what I just told about uh, VS Code would be same for Eclipse as well. Free editor, a lot of plugins. Um, easy, to, easy to get for many, many platforms. Um, you can choose the level of tooling by which plugins you install. So it has a plugin pretty much for anything. Um, Eclipse does have one advantage. It's been around for so long time. So uh, there is some maturity with Eclipse. On the other hand, VS Code is a fresh redesign made from scratch not too long ago. So for me, it feels like a better product right now. Sorry, Eclipse, I used to love you, but then there was less choices for me. And sorry, everybody who still loves Eclipse, respect for you. Once you know any ID very well, you can make it, make it extremely productive because you know the kinks and you can work around them. So I'm not saying you cannot find productivity from Eclipse, but for me, 
choice is right now VS Code. It works better for my particular needs. And every team I've been in, in recently also has made the same choice. So it's either VS Code or, or, uh, or IntelliJ, pretty much. For a few more choices, NetBeans used to be my beloved environment. Uh, the experience with NetBeans is a little bit like IntelliJ, but it's a free open source editor. So you just go and download it. You don't need to pay anything. But uh, it puts the plugins together in a little bit more like uh, IntelliJ idea like, like style. And uh, then you can add on top of that more plugins. But it has, a, I would say that it comes with a bit more equipment. It's geared already towards Java. So for Java editing, this might be a good idea to consider. You can download it, you can get it, you can play with it. I haven't gotten to that, but I used to love uh, NetBeans because it gives you pretty much that standard experience, a lot of tooling, free editor, so what's not to like. But I just haven't got to installing it recently due to these two editors being so good. Finally, we have the text editor crew, so I'm not going to even touch the VI and Emacs setup. <laughs> Those are for uh, a guru. Uh, twisted guru mind so when when you uh, want to kind of double and optimize you can make awesome environments there i'm not that far with them i try to avoid both vi and emacs so that leaves a lot of uh, text editors and i would say i'm using sublime a lot so the main benefit is that these are lightning fast and don't get on your way these also have a little bit of plugin setup so you can also uh, choose uh, to extend quite a lot more. Um, these can handle uh, huge files as well. Some of the other IDs can as well, but you can test it by opening a gigabyte file and seeing how it handles it. So I like the kind of lightweight, rapid look and feel. And uh, this is something that I use when I fall in a rabbit hole and I start using something that's not really well supported by the other IDs yet. Because uh, for unsupported languages and technologies, this is better, typically. And sometimes I just want to open a huge JSON file and rapidly format it and, um, and uh, kind of explore it without really going into that create a project um, kind of setup. So, so the other ideas are good when you have a folder of files and you want to keep it together. But this, um, these lightweight text editors are awesome when you just want to play with one file rapidly and get it opened very fast, uh, don't want to get anything in your way. Then I use these ones, so other excellent uh, rapid text editors uh, that I have used in the past as well, include Notepad++, Atom, Sublime, at least. So all, all of these are awesome quick text editors. And finally, nothing is stopping you from installing multiple ones and just uh, kind of alternating what, what, what's, uh, what tickles your fancy each day. So IntelliJ IDEA, VS Code, and Sublime is what I have pretty much in every one of my environments. So I hope um, this video was helpful for you. Remember, if you like these videos, uh, click those buttons, share the links for your buddies, and uh, most importantly, leave me some feedback in the comments section. Speaking of which, I have a question for you. What is your favorite IDE? Leave the answer in the, in the feedback section. And why? So uh, are you preferring Eclipse? And uh, what is your main reason to choose that one? Um, are you agreeing with my choices? Or have you tried them and found them lacking and you have something better? Uh, have you written your own editor and you are happy with that one? As I said, I wrote my own editor, but I was, <laughs> I was really not happy with that one. It was fun experiment, but not a really practical one. So leave some feedback in the comment section and uh, also, uh, tell me if, if this video was helpful for you or if you're looking for something else. But otherwise, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.